page 376, number 25. Solve the equation. 2 times the cosine of x plus 1 equals 0. All right, the first thing we want to do to solve these is get our trigonometric expression by itself. So first, let's subtract 1 from both sides. That'll give us 2 times the cosine of x equals negative 1. Then let's divide both sides by 2. That gives us the cosine of x equals negative 1 half. Now that we have that trigonometric expression by itself, cosine of x equals something, now what we're looking for is the angle or angles that will make this equation true. So we want the cosine of some angle that equals negative 1 half. Okay, so let's use our unit circle here. What we want to do is look on the unit circle and find which angle or angles have a cosine of negative 1 half. Well, to find that, what we need to look for is the angle or angles that have an x-coordinate equal to negative 1 half. Why the x-coordinate? Well, if I pick any point on my unit circle and label these legs x and y, Sokotoa tells me that um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine has to do with x, so since I'm saying that cosine of my angle equals negative 1 half, I want the angle whose x-coordinate equals negative 1 half, like this one and also like this one. So I've got two different answers here. x equals 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Now those aren't the only solutions because, well let's just think about this. If 2 pi over 3 works for this equation, if I went all the way around my circle and ended in the same spot, that would work also. So if I added 2 pi radians, if I added 4 pi radians, 6 pi, 8 pi, I'd be back at the same spot. I'd get another answer that works. So I can show that by saying 2 pi over 3 plus 2 times n, n stands for the number of rotations, times pi. So it's like 2 pi times n. Likewise here, 2 times n times pi, just to show that, that it doesn't matter how many times we go around the unit circle, as long as we end up on these two spots, those angles will make this equation true.